I'll pump it like 10 times. And you just gotta catch it with your foot. What is up, Rad Potential YouTube, and welcome to today's video. I think I had mentioned in the past that I wanted to do a video showing what it's like to drive a fully bridge ported rotary on the street, daily drive it, take it to the store, do whatever. So this is going to be that video. I don't think I ever concluded the tuning portion. I made a video series about tuning this Weber carburetor on this fully bridge ported 12A you guys can go check that stuff out up here but i never concluded it and said hey this is how it drives this is why it's i don't know epic because it sounds epic it is epic and this is a sweet old car so 1980 mazda rx7 this is my very first rotary powered car i've had it for probably six years now um it's had i guess three different engines in it and i only blew one of them up so I don't know. We took a street ported one out, put a bridge ported one in, blew up the bridge port, put the street port motor back in, built another bridge port, put the bridge port back in. So that's where we're at right now. This is a full bridge port 12A Weber 50 millimeter DCO. So not a DCOE, but a DCO. Um, it has upgraded to the 8485 ignition, which I have a video on how to set that up as well. It has a racing beat header, two and a half inch straight pipe to a little bullet muffler at the back. Yes, don't be mad. I don't run air cleaners. It's hard to just, I don't know. It's a lot of restriction. I like my extra power. I apologize for the wind noise. It's windy. Racing beat strut brace because got to have it. It's also vintage to fit the car. Um, BBS LE wheels. It does have a limited slip in the back. And the engine right now is 100% cold. I've been away for the holidays. Everything's cold, so we're going to do a cold start for you. And show you guys just how easy it is when you have your carburetor tuned properly to start your car. So right here, everybody, neutral. Say hi to the dog. Carburetor prime, we'll turn this off. Pump it like 10 times. And you just gotta catch it with your foot. Alright, so, you will need, when you have a hefty ported rotor, even my street port car, unless you have like a Holly that has a choke, <laughs> or even a Weber that has a choke or a Delordo, this car won't idle until it gets a little bit of heat in it. You can hear it start to kind of die, it might settle in, but as of late when it's been cold, it really kind of tries to load up and then it'll bog itself out and I have to come out here and rev it back up. Um, I like to run the idle a little bit higher so you can see we're at 1500 RPM now. Once it warms up, it'll idle closer to 1800 just because it gives you a nice stoplight presence, epic wrap. Another thing you'll see that's super cool, right here on the upper piece of the runners, right after the carburetor, right here, you will see that that's going to probably fog over by condensation like your drink. That's because when fuel evaporates, the latent heat of vaporization, so like when you sweat, the reason you get cooled off when you sweat is because as it evaporates, it cools. So when the fuel goes from a liquid, there's a liquid in the carburetor to a vapor in the manifold and then gets sucked in by the engine. When it's really cold, it'll ice over. It's really sweet.
All right, so I'm gonna get you guys set up on the window, and then it's probably gonna cut through a few scenes driving just because we'll get to the parts where it bucks, drives, do some donuts, and whatever. Let's go for a little rip. This is me shaking the camera. That's the car shaking me, which shakes the camera. I also broke my transmission, so third gear is kind of janked right now. Can we do a little sitter? with 43s I wouldn't have ever felt what it was like to have the 48s but uh Oh, 
it's epic. You pull up to a stoplight, you are the coolest car at the stoplight. Got a little FRS guy looking over here. Greatest thing too is when you find, we'll just call them Karens for lack of a better term. The folks that don't entirely appreciate super loud and annoying cars, you get a lot of good looks. They're like, what in the heck? What is this really mad weed whacker doing at the dang stoplight? It's Bridgeport. Ripper. Can't go to town and not drive the cool car. You'll need a clutch that can handle some more horsepower because a stock one will spin because I was able to spin a stock clutch with my street port motor. So get a clutch that can take the abuse. So right there when it starts bucking you just put it in neutral. Coast. Now when you start losing speed. First gen, creaky door, normal thing. So, that is, uh, that's what it's like to drive a Bridgeport into town and around town. Um, it's definitely not like, it's not hard to do. You can do it. You got to make some sacrifices. Um, one of which being, you want to stay in a little bit higher RPM. Um, the second of which being, you can hear me really having to get it off the line. Um, it, you can't really lug it around that well. Um, it doesn't have a lot of torque down low. It'll bog itself out pretty quick. Um, but, you know, if you have an epic exhaust, you get epic braps, you get epic looks, good and bad. And it's super fun. And it rips. It does good burnouts. And it's pretty quick. It's definitely way faster than a stock port or a street port RX-7. I mean, you saw it in uh, one of those poles that kind of skirted the tires and got a little loose. It's, uh, I would argue that a street port car wouldn't really do that. Um, at least not get the car, like, sideways loose. So, super fun. Definitely, if you're uh, pulling your motor apart, something to consider when you go to put it back together. Um, but, uh, yeah. Also, I will say, um, when you do a bridge port, don't expect to be able to use the same Nikki carburetor that you have without doing some modifications to it. These do require a lot more air and fuel up on the top end, so you'll want to look at getting into a Weber or a Holley or um, some other assorted bigger carburetor than a, uh, than a Nikki carb. So, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep it revved.